Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Ashley Dreaming and I love cozy games. Today's video is the long-awaited island reset video that I filmed a few weeks ago and just haven't had a chance to voice over before now. So I wanted a nice fresh start. I find it's a great way to get me back into the game. So I thought it was time for a new island. This isn't my main island. I actually have two Switch consoles. I have never reset my main island, but I like to reset the secondary one every once in a while. I expected to have to reset this a few times before I found an island I liked with fruit and villagers I like, but I actually managed to do that in the first try, I believe. So, I actually liked a few of these maps. I liked that the resident services, I forgot what it was called for a second. I liked that it's in different spots in these. I ended up going with the one on the bottom right because Islands resident services was over to the side, which I've never done before. And I like that there's a little island in the middle of the island. Debated skipping over this intro, but I think we all know and love it. I like the nostalgia it brings. I was hoping for peaches, but the cherries are pretty cute. Really anything but pears would be fine, because that's what I had on my other island. And I couldn't turn down these villagers. I mean, look how cute Rudy is. And Faith is one of the new ones. She's not really a favorite of mine, but she is pretty cute. I don't know if I'll keep either of them, because my plan for this island is more elegant core. So blues and purples and whites. So I'm hoping to get villagers that more fit the theme. But I think I got pretty lucky as far as starter villagers go. And now Tom starts putting us to work. I love that we're not even on the island for a few minutes before he's like, okay guys, I'm gonna stand here and you're all gonna go around and do everything. You're gonna set up your tents, you're gonna get me some sticks and fruit, and I'll watch. He's like the supervisor nobody asked for. Before I placed my tent down, I wanted to tour the island a little bit, get a better feel for it. I knew I wanted to put everything on the beach at the start. Actually, I wanted to try to put something here, but it doesn't fit. So I want to put everything on the beach so that it's easier to move later, because I am going to terraform when it's unlocked and design the island that way. So instead of having to move the houses twice, I figured I'd just put them on the beach and move them once, once I figure out where everything's going. It's actually a pretty big starting area. 
most of the items I get don't have this much space at the starting zone. And it has a pond, which I thought was really nice to catch the pond fish early on. Overall, I'm quite impressed with this island layout. And I especially love the little island in the middle. But I don't really know what I want to do with it yet. I did debate putting Nook's Cranny there or Able Sisters, but I don't think I really like that. I could maybe put the museum, but that would take up the whole island. So we need to think of something more creative to put there. Maybe the campsite, actually. That could work. Me struggling to put the tents down. It's very on brand for me. I feel like I struggle to place everything in this game. Now that Tom has finished putting us all to work, we get to enjoy the little celebration. I always go with Cedar Cove from my second island. My main one is Lunar Isle. And I just really like Cedar Cove. Although Isla del Biceps would have been a good choice. Rudy was onto something there. only fair that I get to name it. I mean, I did do all the work. I even picked where their tents go. I love the little cherry drinks, they're so cute. I think the little smoothies are one of my favorites for the new cooking DIYs. Made sure to go around and introduce myself to everyone. Although Tom just told me to go get some rest, but I did say hi to everyone before going to do that. Organize my tent with my abundance of furniture. Home sweet home. Yep, there's something really creepy about waking up to Tom Nook outside of your tent. Like, who knows how long he's been out there, he's just like, okay, time to get up. I'm tired of standing out here. You know, Tom, some of us get tired from carrying all the weight of this island. Now he's gonna explain the phone. Then I went through all of the apps to get rid of the little notification and to get some easy points. It's a good way to get points. If you take a picture, change your passport info, what else? Create a custom design. All of those are easy points to pay off Tom. So I just went through and did all of those and made the clear path because it's really useful later 
to stop plants from growing where you don't want them to. I use it all the time. I'm just going around collecting the resources. Pick up a lot of the weeds and stuff too. Most of the first day gathering materials and catching enough fish and bugs to unlock blathers. I didn't do anything too exciting, but I made a lot of progress for the first day. I unlocked everything I could. But if you follow me over on Twitch, you'll have seen a more updated version of the island. I haven't played in a little bit, but we did villager hunt. I think those VODs are still up if you want to watch it. We found our next three villagers. They unlocked Nuke's Cranny. And a lot of resource gathering. I also went to a tr few treasure islands. That video is already up on my channel if you want to watch that. That is also from this island. Which is another reason why I say this was a long-awaited video. <laughs> I recorded it before that one and just didn't get around to doing the voiceover until then. And go around catching fish. Missing a lot of them because I'm terrible at fishing in this game. Is anyone else bad at this? Like, I know the trick. I know you look away, you listen for the sound and the vibration. But I'm still trigger happy. I still hit it preemptively even though I know it's wrong. Or for the really fast fish, I'm too slow. There's no winning. I'll catch a few in a row, feel confident, and then I ruin it all. And then I get frustrated and ruin the next few. You think after probably close to 2,000 hours in this game on both systems, I'd be better at fishing, but no. Still miss. I'd say at least 30% of the time. It used to be pre 50 50, so I guess I've improved. Make my tiny amount of bells. As you can see, I've got quite a few points from just doing the odd little task. It's pretty easy to pay off Tom in the first day if you're willing to grind up the points. I give Tom all my creatures so that he gets his phone call from Blathers. The first few days were a lot of bugs and fish piled outside of Blather's tent waiting for him. The very first time I played this, I actually had no idea that you could leave stuff outside and it would be there the next day. Like I thought if I placed the bugs on the ground they'd be gone in the morning. I didn't realize you could place it like furniture. So when I first played, I didn't do a lot on my first day because I had no backpack space and I didn't know I could leave the bugs out. So piece of advice if you're new, you can leave the bugs out. As long as you place them, you're fine. Don't release them because then they're gone, but you can place the bugs and fish like furniture outside. I of course had to put my new hat on. If Rudy gives you a hat, you wear the hat. It's actually kind of cute. I've since replaced it with Treasure Island finds, but it was a nice addition to my starter outfit. Just 
scrambling to get some tree branches and see if I can catch any wasps or anything for some bells. Oh, I forgot to mention I have this island set to spring. I think I have it set to May. I even decided if I wanted to be a spring island or a summer island, but I think either of those would work with my theme. I haven't really been time traveling on this island at all, other than having the date set to May. And if I miss days playing, I tend to go back. But I'm trying not to skip too far ahead. When I first started playing, I never time traveled. Like, I played for a few months at least before I started. I didn't do it until I was flattening my island and it would have taken forever. But now I time travel quite a bit. But I try not to do it too much with my new islands. Because I kind of like those beginning stages where you're just grinding it out to get the bugs, to get the bells. I like that initial appeal of the game. Probably why I like resetting so much. Because my current island, it was finished. I had finished all the collections. I didn't really know what else to do. So I inevitably flattened the whole island again. <laughs> so I knew I didn't want to reset and I wasn't really loving my island anymore. I was originally trying to do it piece by piece instead of a full flatten, but that wasn't working. So it's flat and I'm slowly building it back up. I've done a few areas so far. I have all of my finished areas up on my channel. Working through them, that's my main series right now on my channel, is building back up my island. We're doing a spring core theme on that one. So that one is also time skipped to the spring. I love that the moment you pay Tom off, he's already trying to sell you more services and get more money from you. Never the businessman. I went with a plain black roof. I'm gonna change it anyways, so I figured it doesn't matter. Every few expansions, I think, he asks you about the roof. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you everyone for watching. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. I'll see you again soon.